Blood Bowl Chaos Edition. This week's match is the Einvids versus the Blooded, Bloody Handed Angels. Dark Elf team, not played on those before. Um, should be a good match. I know the guy who plays these has played them in a previous tournament. He did really well for himself, so I'm looking forward to a hard fought match. I've picked up some value, bought myself a couple of new players, and uh, slightly starting to pull ahead now. I don't think there are too many people with a higher TV than I have. Maybe a little bit, but we'll see. And as usual, press escape to get out of the automatic camera. N and G. So the Ironbeards choose to receive, they won the toss. And I've also changed some of the settings on the game. The graphics should be a little bit sharper, if you can see that. And I've also changed the opacity for the chat box. So it should be easier if you see what's going on from now on. If you have any more comments or changes you want to make, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. My new player includes a new runner. If you remember in the first game against the Wood Elves, my last one was turned to Goo after being thrown face first into another elf and bouncing really hard so we'll see how this new player goes Angtrek Axe Beard Axe ladies and gentlemen the Dark Elves begin to line up they are quite aggressive um, it's a good setup actually minimum number of people on the touch line which means I can only attack the minimum number of players in any one go and they're also spread out quite far apart so if I want to try and get multiple of my players against them there's, I'm either going to have to line up like I am doing or leave gaps between them what that will do is make it easier for him to push his way through and get a player onto my side of the pitch fortunately I want to be nice and aggressive I line up, there aren't too many gaps for him to do that Although I do make the obvious mistake of I put my blocker and my troll slayers on the wrong side. What I want to be doing is having the frenzy player on the inside pushing out. So if I can get someone off the pitch I will do. But I make this mistake and I don't change it for the rest of the match. The weather changes from nice to nice. Not a big difference there. But that's really far back in my half. I've got to do a lot of running. Good thing I've got my runner in to do it. We'll start knocking down as many players as we can. And that's an excellent start. Badly hurt, no long term effect, but that's a player off the board straight away. And if you look carefully at the other side of the pitch, the Dark Elves don't have any substitutes. Every time they lose a player, it's going to go in my way. Two down. Three down, good start. So his entire front line is down, I can make a blitz wherever I want to go. Start off, do some marking up. <laughs> Remember, always do your moving and your non-dice related actions before you roll dice. So if it goes wrong, you've achieved something. Pushed and pushed. Uh, not a great result because now he's automatically got a 2 on 1 on that blocker. But we'll see. Pick up the ball. Oh, I've missed having sure hands. I've missed it so much. Best skill a dwarf player can have. Now I know I've left a gap along the left hand side for a player to come through. Sort of intentional. I'd rather have a block it in the middle ready to support my runner if someone does get through. And at the same time, it's. What's the word? I'm giving him somewhere to run. Going through the right hand side is a lot tougher, a lot tighter. If, I th if he thinks it's easy to go through the left, he'll go through the left. But I know he's going to go that way, so... Maybe a little bit of reverse psychology there. But instead he lines up in front of my front line. <laughs> Clearly he knows I'm coming to him. So he's not in any particular rush to get the ball off me. 
And of course, the same, it works both ways. I can't get through this line either, not without a lot of blitzes and some blocks. Stupid elves dodging everywhere. Shouldn't be allowed. What I will point out that I really like about this team, the Bloody Handed Angels, all the characters have been named after Biblical Angels, which I think is a really nice touch. You don't see... well, I guess it depends who you play. You don't see a lot of teams even with customised names, I tend to find, but having a theme running through, it's really nice to see. I mean, my guys are all custom named, they're not to a theme though. Some of them are jokes, some of them aren't it. Meh. Again, marking up. And throwing out some hits. I picked the one guy on the Dark Elf team with the block skill. Excellent. Still, plenty of tackle zones around. Um, his linemen are going to struggle to get through there easily, even with elven technology at their tips. And to that end, I move the trolls throw and the blocker in the way. So the runner and the blitzer up on the left have a harder time of going all the way around to my runner. Burn the reroll and get exactly the same result. Troll Slayer goes down. Marvellous. I also apologise, ladies and gentlemen, I am laid up with another cold. So if you hear me coughing and spluttering in the background, sorry. However, as turnovers go, that wasn't too bad. He was the last guy on my team who needed to move and it didn't hurt him at all, so no big deal. Uh, he takes the time, he's going to try and knock over my entire front line I think, which is interesting. Makes perfect sense, but one bad dice roll and he's stuck toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bunch of dwarves, like that, for example. So now I've got at least three of his players stuck in a tackle zone, and there's not a lot he can do about it. Well, I suppose he can keep hitting me, he's still got his blitz available. He can still do it. Yeah, thought so. These are all knockdowns though. It's not like it's doing me any harm, and as soon as I stand back up again, I'm exactly where I want to be. Hmm. I suspect he was hoping for some injuries there. If he can get a couple of my players off the pitch, he can certainly outrun me. And once he's doing that, there's not a lot I can do about it. I might have made the effort to go for it and put myself into another tackle zone if I were that guy. As it is, I've got a free attack on the Blitzer to do whatever I need to do to get him away. Like this. Perfect result. Um, put a tackle zone on his runner and also to the left so when I bring my runner around it's hard of him to dodge his way through and now we commence a cage with the troll slayer and when he gets up the three blockers or at the very least stop people coming around the top to do some blitzing And now, exactly as I said I was going to do, start marking up. I've now got all of my dwarves in base contact with his elves. He's going to have to do a lot of dodging to get away from there. Oh, 
or just beat me up. That works too. Might not have followed up where I he, but then again, you just still have the two players, or well, you had the two players at the back who can move freely. Uses a reroll after a double skulls. I might not have done that. I would have started chasing down the ball carrier. Because so all he's done now is. Well, it's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 when these guys get up next turn. And he's not really achieved anything over here apart from surrounding himself by dwarves. And now the witch elf is in serious trouble. <laughs> Good play with the runner. However, again, I'd have been chasing down the Troll Slayer and the runner on the left. Get them out of the way, get the wall off me, while all my players are tied down to the right. Like that, that's, that's more like it. Just remember, you can't score if you don't have the ball. And if you can't get the ball, stop your opponent from scoring. He spent a lot of time beating up, basically, my guys who were there to be beaten up. That's what blockers do. He's not really slowed me down too much. So I take this lineman down. I've got three whole squares free to run up this side. Trying to work out my best move here. I need to get my dwarves away from these two elves in the middle. I certainly need to get my runner away from them, and I'm working out the best way to do that, which is to take this guy down. Oh, another. No, it's the same guy with block. Fantastic. Same guy who caused me a problem last turn. Uh, not a big problem is I can now put a couple of tackle zones on him and the other two guys and my runner's probably not going to get knocked off that worked out as well as it could have done just marking up again Force him to dodge. He's already used a, one of his two rerolls, so he's in the same position as I am. But technically, I'm winning. Ah, the joys of the block skill. Again, I might not have spent time attacking those guys. He can dodge away from me, I can't do it to him. So, that guy in the middle of the pitch he's just knocked down isn't doing anything. He might as well have just left his blitzer on him, or his lineman on him, and dodged his blitzer around to go and deal with the ball carrier. But I guess that's just me. Possibly the worst possible result he could have gotten with that push. So now his lineman is going to get it in the face from the troll slayer.
Ooh, that went badly. Arguably, that was a good play. Uh, try and blitz the, the runner from this angle. I think it would be about an even attack. One dice, he'd knock the runner off. So I'd lose my ball carrier, and I'd lose the ball. Hopefully the ball will come back in over here somewhere. He's got plenty of people to pick it up. But he failed the dodge roll, used his last re-roll, and was KO'd for his triples. That's a shame. But... I got exactly what I wanted for my Troll Slayer. The runner's got plenty of room to manoeuvre. Uh, I should probably be moving him rather than making these attacks, but I'm... I taste elf blood, and it tastes good. That could have gone worse. So since the blitzer didn't go down to the ground, I've decided not to run him ahead. Because I know this block is going to get knocked over. And he can get his lineman up here. His blitzer can dodge away quite easily, so I have no one around this side to stop him. The ball carrier would get knocked down quite easily, I feel. So I leave him surrounded by at least one tackle zone. Two more guys behind him. It's going to be a lot harder to knock him down. So rather what I can do is get blocks on the blitzer when he stands back up, and this blitzer here. And generally, get them both down before I can start running away. Do it in safety. Uh, to that end, I start surrounding them with more tackle zones and putting people in the way. So he can't get reinforced easily. I haven't forgotten about this guy over here. He's waiting for me to drop the ball. He's an obvious catcher, makes a run for the end zone. Although, he's only movement six. He's nearly dwarf-like in stature. That's not a compliment for you, ask. <clears throat> well, changed his mind about that, perhaps. He's to get some of his players away and start getting towards the ball carrier. Didn't get it. Uh, might not have followed up because, well, he's still in a tackle zone. It would have been better off going around the front and getting in the way, if only to use up my blitz next turn. Having said that, I'm not. I haven't scored yet. I'm not winning. So who's to say who's got the better idea? Good call. It's a block. Makes it easier for his blitzer to get away. And one less person on his lineman, of course. So now he can start putting tackle zones on my ball carrier. Uh, he didn't go for it. Oh, yes, he does. There we go. So, yes. I have to blitz to get my ball carrier loose. Good call. This is what I think he should have done last turn, or maybe the turn before that. Um, he can certainly outrun me. He's not yet in the way for my ball carrier. But it's still going to take me a turn or two to catch up with these guys. So... I've got some breathing space here. I think I can make use of that. That KO was a bonus. It's another tackle zone on the blitzer. The lineman gets knocked over. Two spaces of movement here. So what I can do is start moving my guys around, put a wall along this column here, my runner on the other side, forcing the witch off and let's go either around the top or to fight their way through.
More importantly, I want to get my runner away from the side. That witch elf and her frenzy skill could see him go crowd surfing. And I've lost players to that before and I don't like it. My guard blitzer. So now that dark elf blitzer is in a world of problems. Get my blockers one on one with his blitzer and his runner. Which, given that I have the tackle skill on these guys and the block skill on both of these guys, makes things go in my favour more often than not. Marking up, getting ready for the push. Again, I don't want to move too far forward. I can run eight squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the touchdown. If I move him up here, he's gonna get blitzed into oblivion by the witch elf, and I don't want that. And again, Tackle zone to the left, so if anyone does come around this way, they're not going to get a one-on-one -on -one from this angle. <clears throat> and now it's just a roadblock. He's going to put as many bodies as he can in my way and force me to run through them. Traditional dwarven sport, elf running. We'll give it a try. <clears throat> However, He's left me this gap, this one square here, that's going to make all the difference. If I don't use the Troll Slayer to frenzy the Witch Elf off the pitch, which I may well do, I could use this blocker to knock her this way. Follow up, and I've got this clear channel up the left for my runner to make. I'd like to get the Witch Elf off the pitch, but I don't think I can do that easily. Dark Elves dodge away, they're waiting to get the ball, they think they're going to get it next turn, throw a pass and then make a run for the end zone. Worthwhile, that's the only way he's going to score in this half, I think. It's not like my guys are going to intercept it at all. Yeah, so we're working out the dice here. Can the Troll Slayer push the Witch Elf into the crowd? I think realistically, I could. I have the other Troll Slayer here, taking out this guy's assist, and the Blitzer taking out this guy's assist, and the Blocker here, no that would be terrible because then the Runner couldn't get through, no, well I could get a one dice on the Witch Elf if I really wanted to, but then I'm relying entirely on Luck to knock her out the way twice. So instead, I'd rather use a Tackle Block character just to push her away. Knocking her down was a bonus, but all I do is run for the end zone. Two go for it. I've still got a re-roll. Don't need it. Excellent debut for my runner. Known in the Dwarven Pit. Two Dark Elves get up, so he's still down to nine players. Now he's got two turns to score. I swap out my runner for another blocker, because at this point I just want to roadblock, and having the tackle skill is more important than having sure hands at this point. Dark Elves are trying to set up a chain by the looks of it, so wherever the ball lands over here, the runner can pick it up, pass to the Witch Elf, push his way through here, does he put another player over there? I think he does. Yeah. So if he knocks down the two blockers or even pushes them out of the way, he's got an open channel. Runner gets the ball to the Witch Elf or the Blitzer, they run through here, 
and hope they can carry on running in the next turn and score in turn 8. It's worthwhile. It, it works. I've seen it. I've tried it. Very, very tight on time though to equalise. And we kick off. We get changing weather from nice to nice again. That's about as good a kick as I could have hoped for. It's as far away from any living thing as it can possibly go. Yes, the runner can still throw it to a witch elf or anyone who else who's down here, but it's going to be a, quite a long throw. And every little bit, particularly with no rerolls left for the dark elf team, Okay. I guess he was hoping to knock the troll slayer down and get an extra tackle zone on the blocker. Didn't quite get it, but you know, he's got a way through. There's a gap now. Uh, it's only two dodge rolls. Fairly easy to make for an agility four. Ooh, flubs the throw. So that's killed his, uh, his hope for a touchdown. So I just need to start thinking about the next half. Uh, beat up as many elves as I can get my grubby little dwarven hands on. Which is fine by me. Injury. Perfect. Badly hurt. No long term effect. Again, perfect. I know some people are quite ruthless when it comes to Blood Bowl. I'd rather not do serious killing damage to players unless I really have to, because that, particularly early in the season, it's only the fourth game, I don't need to hurt people that badly, I don't think. But it gets them off the pitch, makes my life a bit easier. Another lineman gets knocked out, so that's four players off the pitch for the next half. Well, at least two, maybe two more. And a push. Just because. Can he score this turn? No, I don't think so. It, elves have some fast players, but you need at least, I think it's 12, 13 movement. 13 movement. Which you can do with a, uh, a Skaven Gutter Runner, with a couple of skill upgrades. Elves, however, simply can't run that far. Even the really fast ones, like the Witch Elves. Uh, can the Wood Elves do it? I think the Wood Elf Catchers can possibly do it. I'm not sure. Certainly not this late in the game. Launches a pass. It's a free star player point. Why worry? Maybe he just wants to prove a point. He's going to get through my line, and that's the end of it. Seems silly, but I do it all the time. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's he's going to run the witch elf. Is he? No, he's not. Okay, that's strange. Well, maybe not strange. He's just looking to injure my players at this point, get some star player points, and slow me down for the next half. Armor value 8 and 9, however, says no. End of the half. Alright, not a bad debut for my runner. Iron Beards 1, Bloody Handed Angels 0. We'll see you back shortly. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.